Hello. <laughs> Some time ago, or yeah, actually it was a couple of years ago, uh, a viewer of one of my videos gave me the advice to make a video about ABBA. And I thought, well, that's a very good idea. I haven't barely mentioned ABBA through the years in this uh, YouTube channel. That is still fairly, I mean, I, nothing much happens here, but now and then, it's not totally gone. It's not totally dead yet. Um, and I thought, well, I heard some rumors about new material from ABBA being on the way. So I thought, okay, I'll make some sort of ABBA video when we get, when we get closer to that. But then nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, Corona happened, nothing happened and so on. And until last month when we heard two new ABBA songs. And I'm sure you have already seen them and heard them many times. Um, Don't Shut Me Down and I Still Have Faith in You. So, and also we got the news that there would be a new ABBA album coming soon. So, of course, ABBA fans are delighted and I'm delighted. So uh, let's talk a bit about ABBA. Um, I'm going to talk about their eight studio albums and my thoughts about them. Um, all of the members of ABBA, those of you who are ABBA fans already know this, uh, were um, already more or less famous artists and successful artists in Sweden. When they joined, um, uh, they, they got married and uh, they formed their group Fest Folket and they started performing together and making singers together where they called themselves Bjorn, Benny, uh, Agneta and, and Anne Frid. So it took some time for ABBA to develop and for ABBA to even get its name. Uh, the records I've listened to are the, the latest uh, pressings. I think it's the latest pressings. Um, the colored ones in the box, uh, the studio box set that was issued last year. But I have compared them with the older pressings. And the thing with the, the ABBA albums is that they more or less always sounded good. They were always good pressings and well mastered and so on. So uh, they're nice. But if you can, can get hold of some older copies or... I mean, ABBA records aren't that rare, really. Uh, that's just as fine. But still. It took some time for ABBA to really find their way, um, but uh, to find their name. And so, so, as I said, and this is, was the first album, uh, Ring Ring. And ABBA competed in the qualifica uh, qualification uh, for the Eurovision Song Contest in 1973. Most people thought they would win. They didn't. Uh, and, uh, well, but a record was recorded. And, uh, and Bjorn, Benny, Agneta and Frida. So it's not ABBA here, it's more ab or FBA. Anyway, um, the thing that it's so typical and interesting with this record is that um, it really goes all over the place. We have all sorts of music styles and they try many different uh, styles and genres and so on. And uh, I mean, the result is fairly good. It's a good pop album, but it, it doesn't really hold together that well. And another thing, um, uh, it, it hasn't really been made clear that the girls are the vocal stars of the group, because Bjorn is singing just as much as the girls um, in, on this album. Anyway, so which albums or which tracks should we listen to here? Well, all of them, but... Those that I like, I mean, Ring Ring, okay, but it's been played to death here. But I'm very fond of uh, the Another Town, uh, Another Train, uh, that was also made in Swedish by the Swedish dance band Hütz. Uh, it's a ballad with vocals by Björn and very nice mellotrome uh, playing by Benny Anderson. Um, I think this was the only album where they had lots of mellotron and, and because it was a bit before the Moog synthesizer, at least in the world of ABBA. 
uh, well, also the only composition by Agneta Felsku, Dissolution, and uh, Agneta Felsku was actually the most um, successful uh, composer of ABBA before ABBA because she had more hits as a composer uh, than Benny Anderson. Also, Agneta Felsku had uh, recorded several uh, solo albums. Um, with her composing most of the songs and she was a really really good composer and it's a bit sad that she didn't continue to do the composing because she really had the skills and the dissolution ballad is great by uh, with lyrics by Bjorn Ulvius um, well Nina Pretty Ballerina became a sort of a hit in Europe it was also made popular by Swedish dance bands uh, love isn't easy, but it sure is hard enough. Well, you can interpret that how, however you want, but um, it's uh, da, 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 da. it's a, it's an interesting um, country rock tune. It's not that famous though. Um, I am just a girl has also been made by. The group Family Four and the Swedish actor Jan Kulle, but there he didn't sing that he was a girl, he sang that he was a man, just a man. Uh, so this goes all over the place. We got we got ballads, we got uh, Schlager, and we got some country rock, and we also have uh, some attempts at uh, glam rock. The glam rock attempts are always quite amusing, but maybe not always that good, but still. It's a nice album, but it would take some time for they, for them to find the style that would make ABBA famous. Right, and the same goes with their big breakthrough album in Sweden with Waterloo from 1974. They won the Swedish um, um, qualification to the Euro Eurovision, and they also won the Eurovision Song Contest. And it's probably one of the most famous winners of. Uh, Eurovision Song Contest uh, the history and uh, they also started thinking okay maybe hmm, maybe we can have a bit of a European or almost inter well international career not just Europe maybe the rest of the world too and um, they tried but there are some songs here that still make them sound a bit like the same kind of group that played on Ring Ring it goes a bit all over the place like the Caribbean style sitting in the palm tree and some other attempt at uh, playing glam rock like King Kong song. But then the, the, the tune Hasta Mañana, they almost competed in the Eurovision with Hasta Mañana and not win what with Waterloo. In an alternate universe, how would that have been? I doubt they would have had their big breakthrough though. Um, the only track that Benny sings on his own, Susie Hang Around, not that impressive. Um, Honey Honey became a minor hit, but it's not one of the most. I don't, I mean, I'm just saying my opinion here. It's not one of the most uh, um, memorable ABBA hits. So it became very popular in Sweden and sold well and would later sell well in the rest of the world too. But it's still, it's still a bit all over the place, so to speak. Then, the first, this album that just called ABBA from 1975, this is where I think that they start to really find their, what, what we think of uh, when we think of ABBA. Uh, first of all, they had some great hits like Mamma Mia, S.O.S. Uh, and a minor hit with the uh, Billy Vaughan, um, influenced song I do I do I do I do uh, also they continue with some glam rock with rock me and also Benny Anderson's instrumental tune Intermesso number one um, still trying a bit with the Caribbean reggae stuff with tropical love land um, hmm. uh, but my favorite on this album is without doubt the ballad I've been waiting for you with vocals by Agneta Felsko. That's one of my favorite songs um, of the early ABBA stuff. Um, that song really lifts this album. 
Yes, yes, yes. Okay, in 1976, arrival from 1976, as I said, with this helicopter motif. Um, I'm not sure if this is the actual helicopter that can be seen at the ABBA Museum. If that is so, I've sat in this. Um, but I have to say that ABBA must be very small people because it was a small helicopter, <laughs> really small. No, I don't think it's the same, it can't be. No, I don't know. Anyway, um, this is where they get stronger and stronger as a pop group. They get rid of the musical experiments that aren't that that's uh, not that good. I mean, it works better and better and they uh, get more and more um, reliable, so to speak. Uh, and there are less uh, songs that are a bit mm hmm I mean, even the, the ones that are less famous on this album, like uh, My Love, My Life, uh, and Tiger, perhaps, and even the, the title track, Arrival, is very good. The only one that I think is maybe a bit so-so is Dum Dum Diddle, but I don't know. It would have been great on the Waterloo album two years earlier, but at this time I thought it was a bit old. But of course, starts with the track, When I Kiss the Teacher, which probably is the teacher's favorite ABBA song. Many of us, anyway. And then the big one, Dancing Queen. Uh, knowing me, knowing you, and money, money, money. Why did it have to be me? Which is one of my favorite songs with vocals by Bjorn and Vios. So the whole song, album is filled with hits. So this is one of the stronger ones. Uh, and the, they made eight ones, eight albums, st studio albums. This is, is the fourth one, so, um, um, and I would say the second one where they really uh, function as the ABBA we know today. Right. Over to ABBA, the album from 1977. <clears throat> and of course, there was ABBA, the movie, the same year, which is definitely worth having a look at um if you compare it to arrival and again this is my opinion i think this is a bit less interesting uh, not that, that many hits i mean we have take a chance on me and thank you for the music and they are fine and dandy of course um, and the name of the game of course too but um, there are some songs like uh, I Wonder, I'm a Marionette, Move On. Okay, they are nice, they are very comp competent pop, but it, I, they don't really grab me, so to speak. Uh, but the fairly unknown song, One Man, One, Wo one Woman, is uh, and one of my favorites on this album. But I think it's slightly worse than Arrival. And after that album, I heard that they had some major problems getting back, finding new music, finding new inspiration for a new album. They had been touring all over the world. They were world stars, world famous. And of course, it must be difficult to get back the inspiration. But when they finally got it, they got it well. And this is Voulez-vous. And it's probably, I think it's one of the prettiest album sleeves with this blue um well it's, it's playing with a um, polar la label polar symbol um and also it's a party album i think this picture is taken at alexandra one of the biggest clubs in in uh, stockholm in the 1970s um and some tracks at least the, the title track, Voulez Vous, is recorded in the uh, United States with American musicians and it has a very special sound. Um, the starting track, As Good As New, I've been, I've been dissing that before because I didn't really like this Baroque um, uh, string uh, uh, quartet stuff and, and the 
heavy disco stuff. But the more I listen to it, I think, well, yeah, it's really weird. It's really weird, but it 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 works. Who am I to say it doesn't work? It works well. Then we have tracks like I Have a Dream, Angel Eyes, and The King Has Lost Its Crown. His Crown. Some thought that it's a bit too pretentious to be enjoyable, but I don't agree. I like it a lot. And the, <laughs> the, 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 the glam rock track, Does Your Mother Know? Uh, Chiquitita and a disco, If It Was For The Night. Um, it it holds, holds together very well and it's... Uh, um, they're back with a really, really solid album after the the album that was maybe not as solid. So <clears throat> then this is maybe my favorite album that comes now. Super Trooper from 1980. Um, maybe because, well, I just think this is the last album where ABBA really felt as the strong, happy, uh, party, um, joyful pop group that many want to remember them as. And also, I think the song doesn't have any weak track at all. Not that many ABBA albums really had weak tracks, but I think this, is, this holds together very well. I mean, Super Trooper, The Winner Takes It All. The Winner Takes It All is it's one of the best ballads ever made. Uh, Andante, Andante, um, uh, Happy New Year, perhaps a bit too sentimental, but still works fine. And the Piper, really, really um, special song with uh, some sort of um, historical backstory, a bit scary even. Uh, and the disco anthem, Lay All Your Love On Me. And the final, The Way Old Friends do. It's like the best closing track of an ABBA album ever. Uh, and then we have the, and there was a live recording with the, the audience cheering right into the locked groove. Yeah, I talked about the locked groove before, so you know my view on locked grooves. Some of you, if you don't, never mind, it's not that important. So, if I would have to pick one ABBA album, it would probably be Super Trooper. Still, the album that I, for many years, would say would be the last studio album. Now we know it isn't the last. It is the latest for another month. Then, Voyage. But, can't talk about that now because, of course, it hasn't been released yet. But I have to say, I like the new tracks. Uh, and I've been watching many reaction videos about people being so emotionally taken by the fact new ABBA music, they almost start crying my happiness. It's wonderful to see. I like seeing that kind of emotional flow because it shows that we all care and love music. Anyway, the last album, The Visitors. They stand far apart. Uh, the... This is taken at Skansen, at Julius Krumbeis um, house there, where he had his, um, where he painted the artist Julius Krumbeis, Krumbori, Krumbeis, sorry. Um, and uh, this is, I mean, they got more and more sophisticated with every album, and this is the most sophisticated one. The the uh, album opener, the 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 title track, the visitors about. Russian dissidents. Uh, uh, it's uh, oh, I, I I can listen to that over and over and over again. It's it's a, um, it's a real masterpiece, I think. Um, also the, the the head over heels that didn't really turn into a big, really big hit if you compare it to the earlier ABBA albums. This it's uh, today it's a bit. Uh, sad to think of the fact that this album didn't really do that well. They didn't really have any big hits, even though many of the songs on this album um, well, deserve to be hits, like Head Over Heels. I mean, okay, One of Us became a kind of a hit, but not as big as before. And When All Is Said and Done is another great one. Um, and 
um, slipping through my fingers. I mean, th this album is almost just as solid as the Super Trooper one, but a bit more sad, but also more sophisticated. So maybe this is my favorite after all, even though I keep on talking about Super Trooper, but I have very strong feelings for this as well. So that was the ABBA albums, all eight studio albums. There are some greatest hits albums too, and uh, the Spanish album, Gracias por la, uh, por la Musica, and there's a live album, um, but uh, not talking about them now. These are the eight ones. They are all worth having. They are all quite different, and they are all quality pop music. And that's exactly what I expect uh, with the new upcoming album, The Voyage. Um, this one was issued when I was in first grade. I was seven years old, I think, or I was, was about to be become seven years old. I am today 46 years old. So it's taken quite some time, but it's never too late. And uh, welcome back, Abba, and welcome back, Abba Voyage. And thank you for watching, and bye bye.